Welcome back to the video series where we explore the NCSPN's clinical judgment model and apply the six cognitive skills that you will be tested on in the case studies on the NCLEX exam. This video will focus on step or skill number six, which is evaluating the outcomes or as it, the nursing process, it's just called the evaluation phase. So let's go ahead and see this question number six in this practical application that we've been following throughout this entire series. Item number six, we are still caring for this patient in the emergency department. We've already looked at these three tabs. Now we have this new tab, nurses notes here. We're in the intensive care unit. The tissue plus minogen activator infusion is complete. At 23.30, so two and a half hours later, the client suddenly has become combative and confused and is disoriented to person, place, and time. The client vomited once forcefully. Neurological assessment shows confusion and right-sided weakness. And then we have some vital signs given here. Mildly elevated temperature, heart rate is up a little bit, and blood pressure is up. Now, these assessment findings here for combative and confused are different from what we had originally. The client, the client originally was alert and oriented times four, and yes, they did have this right-sided weakness and right-sided facial droop. But now, and they also vomited forcefully, so your alarm bells should be going off to increased intracranial pressure, something going on neurologically. So the question here is, the nurse has reviewed the information from the nurse's notes, which is the priority action? Administer PRN, acetaminophen, and observe. So that would be addressing maybe the temperature and or any kind of pain, but we're not getting enough data here. And it's not addressing this immediate or sudden confusion. Give PRN blood pressure medication and observe. Well, blood pressure might have to be lowered, but we can't just observe this patient because we have a sudden onset and sudden changes. Prepare the client for a repeat CT of the, of the head, most definitely, because we know that the TPA that we've administered can cause an intracranial hemorrhage. So we definitely should be expecting or suspecting that the patient might be experiencing that. And the only way to figure out what exactly is going on is to do a CT of the head. Request a prescription for restraints that is also not indicated because when we restrain the patient, they might become more confused and combative which in turn might elevate their blood pressure and even their intracranial pressure. As always on your world here, you have the explanation below. And uh, for the correct and the incorrect answers, it also goes into the physiological adaptation of the NCSPN's client need category. And now that we have evaluated the outcomes, and then again, we needed to assess the patient here, actually reassess the patient. So this is not only pertains to the nursing process, but also to the six cognitive skills of the clinical judgment model, that everything is always continuous. There's never really an end point until the patient is completely 100% cured and better and goes home. So this is a very nice emphasis, how we're evaluating the outcome of the TPA and then noting, assessing that there is something different with this patient, and then we need to go ahead and find the priority action. So thanks so much for watching this uh, last question of the series. Please check back for You World on YouTube as well as Nursing School Explained on YouTube and Instagram so that you can review these topics and get more familiar with any of these questions so that you can score great on your NCLEX exam. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.